call, please. Okay. Sherry Butler. Kyler Cox. Here. Christopher Galica. Here. Ed Heil. Here. Ashley Pasquale. Here. Todd Taylor. Here. Scott Welty. Here. And Natalie Strader. Here. Thank you. Okay. Before we move any further in our agenda, I wanted to welcome and uh, recognize our three new board members and give you an opportunity to introduce yourselves and maybe share a little bit um, about why you're on the board. Sherry, would you like to start? Hi. Um, just a little bit about me is that I don't always sound like this, but I have, I have a boy's problem right now, but um, it's probably good that I do, <laughs> but um, it's being corrected. Anyway, I wanted to serve on this board because I saw the article in the newspaper that said that you had a vacancy and were looking for people. I've been involved in Parks and Rec here in Havasu for a long time. And uh, I've been so involved at the Aquatic Center that I was in the first aquatic class <laughs> when it first opened. So I have a love for this community, and I really have a love for Parks and Rec. Um, I left Havasu, as some people do from time to time, and came back. So I've been back for a little over a year now and don't intend to leave again. <laughs> so I love it here. I love this community. I love the desert, the sun. And I like working with a team uh, for the betterment of the community. So. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And Kyler? Thank you. Uh, my name is Kyler Cox. Um, I was born and raised here locally in Lake Havasu. Um, lived here my whole life. Um, I never left, um, and I don't plan on it. Um, I'm married to my high school sweetheart who went to high school here as well, and I have two boys ages five and six, so pretty heavily involved in the community. Um, I coach baseball for Lake Havasu Little League. Um, <clears throat> get the pleasure of coaching two teams. I don't know why I'm so crazy, but it's uh, it definitely is a cool thing to do. And then my kids are actively involved in the Lake Havasu uh, Youth Football Chiefs program right now as well. So pretty heavily involved. Again, my employment, I'm very involved. I attend a lot of meetings with the city as well and am part of a lot of the special events. So again, just want to kind of bring the every person, family kind of voice to the, to the board and, and hopefully eventually the city council and staff. So thank you. Great. Thank you. And Natalie? Um, hi, thank you. My name is Natalie Strader. I found this position through a family friend. Um, I moved here from California when I was seven, and since then we've been really involved in the city and the recreation. I've played softball for seven years with the City League. Um, so I'm always looking for opportunities for leadership, so I'm excited to get involved in the city, and I'm thankful for this position. Thank you. And welcome. Glad you're here. All right, so we will move on to the call to the public. And I don't think we have anyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now we'll move on to the approval of the June 28th meeting minutes. Do I have a motion for approval? Mr. Taylor, was that you? Okay. Yes. We have a second. second. Mr. Welty, a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And next we have the staff report, Mr. Keene. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd first like to say a thank you to Jason Keough, who is a board member and a chairman of our board for a couple different times. Uh, I'd like to thank him for all his time and energy he, he donated to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Uh, Jason and his family have moved out of state. Uh, so unfortunately had to resign his position on the board. But again, thank him. I deeply thank him very much for all the time and effort uh, he spent with us. 
Uh, in our recreation area, the after school program registration began on July 19th. Uh, after school program will begin with the first day of school on August 2nd. The after school program is staff is prepping all the supplies and equipment currently for the upcoming school year. Uh, we will also have a table at the upcoming back to school fair on July 31st. In the aquatics area, the final session of swim lessons will conclude on August 5th. The Lake Havasu High School swim team will begin their practices on August 9th. And our aquatic fall schedule will begin on August 1st and will include a noon lap swim. Special Olympics will continue to utilize the pool on Saturday mornings through the month of August. Uh, some events coming up in the community center. We have the Havasu Community Health Foundation Back to School Fair, which will be held on Saturday, July 31st. Coffee with the mayor and city manager on Friday, August 6th. And the Arizona Collectible and Firearm Show, August 14th and 15th. With that, that concludes my presentation of the director's report, and we'll take any questions. If I could take the opportunity to add um, about the Havasu Community Health Foundation Back to School Fair, um, there will also be childhood immunizations available at that event. If anyone needs to get that just before school starts or for any of their um, younger kids too. Okay, any questions for Mr. Keene on the staff report? I, I have a question about the um, frequency. <clears throat> I remember actually, uh, not this meeting last year, but the next meeting last year, uh, there was discussion as there were changes to the um, meeting frequency for all of the various committees. And uh, we discussed it then. I was just curious. I think in this year we've only had one, uh, <laughs> and I was one of the people who didn't show up, one meeting that we couldn't get a quorum to. How is that schedule of monthly meeting working for you? Is it uh, excessive? Is it about right? I do think it works. And uh, as items come up on the agenda to have the conversation with the chair, uh, if a meeting is necessarily necessary on that month, if for some reason we don't have enough to uh, discuss, then, uh, you know, then we would look to cancel it. But uh, as far as monthly meetings go, that, that definitely works for me. Any other questions? I don't have any either. Thank you. Okay, the next item is election of officers. So this is where we will elect a chair and a vice chair for this um, fiscal year. And um, let's start with chair. Can I get any nominations for chair? Then I would like to nominate Scott, for, uh, Mr. Wealthy, for the chair position. I think I run out of time before I can commit to that as far as my position on the park board. I'm going to have to defer to Sherry on that one. Are you just joking? No. Oh. <laughs> I would like to nominate you, Ashley. You're doing a good job. I'll second that. <laughs> Any other nominations? Did you say no to your nomination? Oh, okay. Um, do we yeah, need I to think make this a motion and a, or have we already done that? So we so we've done that. Now we have now we have two. Uh, so uh, you know, all in favor of Scott being our chair? Aye. Two. Can we have discussion? Certainly. So I would be in favor of Scott if Ashley would hand the baton, in other words, remain as vice for another year, just so that we have continuity of leadership. I'd be happy to do that. 
than I? Yeah, obviously, I think with the discussion, I mean, I don't know, can we revote on that? Because I, I think that changes it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I, I'm an eye on that for sure, too. Okay. And I'm kind of lost. Okay. Were so you I'll... not able to do it, Scott? Is that what you're saying? What's that? Were you saying you were not able to do that? I was not sure of how long I had left on this oh. term on the gotcha. board. Okay. That's and Sherry cleared that up, so I think we're okay there. I like Scott. I okay. I do as well. All right, I think that's pretty much unanimous. Uh, so Mr. Welty will be our chair, and Miss Pasquale will be our vice chair. Do I still finish this meeting? Okay. <laughs> all right well that fun event is over so we're moving on to public hearings right did you have anything else okay well thank you and congratulations <laughs> okay so we have two items on our public hearing agenda the first is the cypress park light update so we're finally there. This will uh, be the last update uh, for this project as the light was installed on July 19th. The concrete base was installed on the 16th and the pole, uh, as you we can watch here in a YouTube video, the pole was uh, stood up and put in its position. So. And you were saying that was to fill a, a, a dark spot in the field. So now it's pretty well evenly lit. Yes, for uh, for the public and, and for our new members, uh, we've we've been working on this project for for a few months now uh, as it was identified as one of the priorities for the, the board uh, to move forward with when the park was built. Uh, there was a section on the southwest corner of the lower field that was not adequately lit uh, for uh, practice to be held. Uh, the lower field it also tends to be where the younger kids uh, do practice. So it was an area that we, we did want to light up. Um, so in the last few months, we've been working to get this light uh, project completed. Uh, and uh, just this last month, it, it was able to be completed as one of the, the projects moved forward by the board. With that, I'll take any questions. I'll just say uh, kudos to you guys and your, and your staff. Obviously, I think uh, Moo is much needed from playing soccer and coaching soccer. It was definitely a, an area that lacked it. So good job. That park is definitely turning out to be a beautiful place. I'm just glad that it turned out the way it did with the, the time and effort that went into that park and what it's a nice park. And now that we're able to get this taken care of, I think is, is a great deal. And I haven't been by there to see how it is at night, but I hear it big difference. So. And that light is hooked into all the others. So. Yes, it's controlled uh, when the lower field is lit that light will be lit, um, con connected to the same controller. Um, so really we have control of the upper field and the lower field. We can turn one or one set on or the other, Great. but that one is uh, connected into the lower field and will work uh, simultaneously with, with all the rest of the lights. Great. Thank you. I won't put our audience member on the spot every time, but this is a public hearing. 
Uh, but we'll go to the discussion and possible action on the Sportsman Club Agreement Amendment Number One. Mr. Keen. Thank you. The the item before you tonight, um, I will be presenting to City Council tomorrow night, and so we're looking for uh, a recommendation uh, to either approve the amendment or not to approve the the amendment number one to the Sarah Park sublease agreement with Lake Havasu City or with Lake Havasu Sportsman's Club. Um, so the, the club approached us uh, uh, maybe six or seven months ago about a concept of uh, adding some additional space for one of the activities that they're, they're looking at adding would be a walking archery course uh, so they could actually maneuver around and shoot different targets as you came around different bends in the, uh, the terrain that's out there. Uh, in looking at the, the map of the area uh, of the park that they would, would be utilizing, uh, we did, as, as city staff, kind of look at it and say, well, maybe we should actually incorporate all the spaces that they currently use into that lease as well. Um, as you can see, the roadway coming in uh, wasn't technically in the area of the park that that their current lease is for. So we expanded that area um, and um, looking, you know, again, uh, we're gonna present that. The current, uh, the existing area is approximately 100 acres and the expansion area is approximately 90 acres. So it would almost be doubling the space. Again, there's um, quite a lot of different terrain that is out there. So it, it's not just flat uh, space. A lot, some of that will serve as a buffer uh, for safety as well. Um, so with that, we'll take any any questions. Okay, any questions from the board? I have a question about the, um, actually I don't think you can see it on the black and white as well, but um, there's a couple trails that sort of run up along that corner of the current lease. Um, or current plan, how will they be affected? Uh, some of them are quite um, like uh, a beer can or a beer bottle, whatever it's called, are quite um, locally famous anyway. I'm just curious how that affects the hiking. Yeah, it, it should have no effect on, on the trails that are um, existing out there. There is a currently a fence line, a barbed wire type uh, line that goes around the, the existing area um, that kind of separates that trail there on the western side. Uh, kind of where the cursor is going through uh, and then down around the southern border. Uh, so so should not affect that at all. Um, Mike, can I add a little bit to that? <laughs> um, I was kind of instrumental in getting this whole thing kind of underway. The uh, roving archery course, uh, the, the whole concept of it was to have it down in a valley and being able to shoot kind of up angle towards it. So the, uh, there's, a, there's a valley that, well, there's several valleys that run through there, but any of the shooting that goes on out there would all be right up against the hills and none of it would impact that area down all the way at the, at the corner. In fact, the area down at the corner is almost not possible for foot traffic, so that's that's how that all came about there. But nothing would be shot in that direction. That would be a, basically starting off of the current archery house, that little archery bunker on the right side of the road. I mean, the whole thing would be expanded from there. I don't think I can answer that. That's okay. Do you, could, are you able to describe or just? I, I don't have an exact plan, because um, again, they, they, were, they were looking at that as being one of the options that they might be able to offer um, by increasing the space. Um, so, we'll, however, any improvements that are done out there, they do need to bring uh, to my office first for approval. So we'll we'll be able to evaluate um, where exactly those 
those places are taking. Um, and again, one of the reasons that the area is so big is for the safety factor um, that we that we do want to keep that isolated and away from other uh, other traffic that is out at the park. And uh, just to add to that, Mike, that all of that is within their fence line or the the fence line and the road. So it's to use it for any other purpose would have required them to move their fence. And we went there a few years ago with that. So it's it's probably the best use of the land possible in my mind, my, my opinion. Other questions or thoughts? I'm just, uh, I'd curious, I, I guess, and I don't know what all can be disclosed, but what, as far as lease pricing and length of lease and stuff like that, again, I glanced at uh, the agreement, and obviously it looks like it ending 2034. Correct. Uh, the, the lease for uh, the Sportsman Club runs concurrent with the master lease through BLM for the Sarah Park property. Um, so... If and when uh, we receive the patent from BLM on that land, then we would look at uh, if we needed to change the lease agreement uh, at all. And I've had some initial conversations with the city attorney regarding that, um, but timing-wise, um, yeah, their their lease currently runs concurrent, uh, and our master lease expires in 2034. Is the Sportsman Club paying for this? Uh, None of the current leases or agreements out at Sarah Park are fee are charged a fee to utilize that space. Um, they do any money that is uh, profited, so to speak, is reinvested into the park um, to to add more amenities that the city is able to offer. Thank you. And I just had two, a couple questions. Is there anyone else looking to use this land space that's approached you or anything? Not currently. Uh, and again, it, the terrain is very, very difficult. It would take a lot of earth moving to make it uh, usable for a lot of different activities. Okay. And then my second question was just, does this um, affect the overall Sarah Park master plan? I don't even know if this is um, actually included in that. It would not uh, affect the master plan or or the patent process in any way, shape, or form. Um, in the master plan, there is a small area down in this area uh, that was associated with the Sportsman's Club uh, expansion as well. So this is just in increasing it by a little bit. Thank you. Does anyone want to make a statement of uh, recommendation and support or otherwise? I move that we uh, recommend item 7.2 be brought to the city council for a vote. Do you recommend that that vote is in, a, in favor? Okay. Yes, in favor. <laughs> Do we have a second for that? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Keene, for passing along our recommendation tomorrow. We will do. Thank you. All right. So the next um, item on our agenda is future discussion items. And just for um, our newer board members, um, this is where you're welcome to make any requests for items to be placed on future agendas. And the process is that we would need a second in order to support that going on to a future agenda. So I will open it up. And I don't know if this is out of, out of term here, but do we have an idea of what the next meeting date will be? Yes, the next meeting date is August 23rd. And I'm sorry, the reason I'm asking this is because I have a topic, but I want to make sure I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, I would like to um, 
and 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 I don't know. Again, obviously, I'm new to this, so I don't know if it's maybe can be a a staff presentation first. Maybe Director Keen can bring it to our attention. But I would like to talk about the island football field a little bit more in depth and kind of the the overall backstory behind it and kind of the maybe if there's any future improvements planned. So I don't know if I need to make that a motion or if that can just be brought up on a staff report. Yeah, no, that that's fine. We, um, we would just need a second to that to bring it forward. I'll second. Okay, great. Any other discussion items? We'll be talking about teen break plans. Yes, we are currently. Uh, okay. And and just so the the new members know as well, as you bring items forward, that doesn't necessarily mean it might be on the very next agenda item. Um, depending on if we need to bring in, I, I know um, this the last meeting we had, there was a couple of BLM items, so we're we're trying to work with the BLM director to possibly have them come and speak as well. So um, it doesn't always necessarily going to work to to fit it into the next uh, actual agenda, but it is something that we have on our books and will and will work forward into future agendas. Thank you. Do you have any requests? All right. So um, Sherry already told us that our next meeting is August 23rd, August and it'll 23rd. be here? Correct. Okay, great. Then um, I will adjourn our meeting at 626. Thank, Thank you, you all.